morning. Good morning. Welcome to morning worship and a very special welcome to Reverend Julian Kershaus, who's with us today. He's our chair of East Anglian District. I'd also like to give a special warm welcome to any visitors who are joining us, especially if you're joining us for the first time. You're very welcome. And please join us after the service for refreshments. We have tea and coffee up in the lounge, which you can reach by these two exits here. Um, we just have a couple notices before we begin. I just want to remind you of the Walking Nativity, uh, which is the churches together, and it, we're hosting, and it's on the 2nd of December at noon. Everyone is welcome. They also need volunteers, particularly adult angels. So if anyone is up for a laugh, please see Charmaine Slave after the service. That would be lovely. Um, next Sunday, December 3rd, Reverend Andy Burroughs will lead our toy service with the town mayor. Um, David Smith will be here to receive the toys. Um, please see Connect for more details there. Um, I'd also like to ask Kim Nichols to come give notice. Good morning, one and all. I'm going to sound like a cracked record, but it's about the Posada. Next week is the toy service, but it's also the week when the Posada starts on its journey, because that is the first Sunday in Advent. There are only two gaps left before the Posada starts its wandering through the whole of Haverhill and beyond. Rush to fill up those two spaces. This will be available to you after the church worship here, up with the coffee, where you can also see the facade itself and understand perhaps a little more of what it's about. Rush, please, fill those spaces. We don't want any gaps. It's up to you. I <laughs> thought. Joshua 15, Jessica 13, Jonah 11, and Josie 6. And I'm going to ask you to pray for them as a family as they continue to serve in their current circuit and prepare to move here. And please also continue to pray for us to find somewhere for them to live because we need to sell the mats and buy a new one, which is fit for purpose. Um, yeah, the old mats is a lovely house, but it doesn't meet Methodist specifications anymore. And it needs a lot of money spent on it if we were to bring it up to anywhere near stand. So please keep praying for that. But the other thing I would say is if you look up Moses John on YouTube or anywhere else, please be careful. There are other people with the same name which are not him that we had we had a slight pick up with um, while we were looking at things for him. So yeah, he's he's a great guy, he's gonna fit in really well here and he's lovely. Okay. Thank you, Kathy, for that wonderful news. But now I'll pass you over to Reverend Julie Kershaus, who will be leading our service today. I'm not he. <laughs> <laughs> right. Julie's actually going to sit and join the rest of us in the congregation for the first part, and the band's going to lead the part of the service. And so we're trying something a little different. Um, so bear with us as we do this this morning. But let's, let's bow our heads as we meet this morning. Uh, to worship our Father. Dear Lord, we thank you this morning that we've been able to come. We thank you for the wonderful news that we've just heard that we have a future minister coming next year. Give us the preparations that we need to do that and let it be a joyful time between now and now also. Father, be with us this morning as we come and worship you, as we bring ourselves before you and as we hear the word that you've given Julian for us this morning. Be with us now and let us open our hearts and bring our worship to you. 
We ask this in your name. Amen. We're going to sing some songs this morning, but hopefully you will all know. Um, I'll take the blame if we don't. Um, but please join us. Uh, stand and sit as you see fit and as you feel fit to do so as well. But let's join this morning with the heart of worship.
Father, we thank you that you brought us here. We thank you that we've come together as friends and as a fellowship. Be with us now as we continue to worship you this morning. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> Quick little notice, because I hadn't got it in earlier. Panto deadline for booking the tickets is the 1st of December. Jackie is choreographing this year, which is very exciting. Jamie says that has written and is directing it. Chloe Ann from church is in it. It is not just a chance for church uh, Sunday club to come. Anybody is welcome. Please see me or email me to reserve your tickets uh, because we have uh, got a bit of discount uh, as a group going and it is a lot of fun. Um, so that's that. What I'm really up to talk about is treasure. What is treasure? If I said you were going on a treasure hunt, what might you want to find? Have got any ideas? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> well, that's a good start. Absolutely. If you were a pirate looking for treasure, what might you want to find? Albert. Gold. Do you know what? Let's combine the two. Hiding around the church, and honestly, I cannot remember where I put them. There are some chocolate coins. Go. Go find them. Oh. Unless Derek has sneakily found them all already and hidden them somewhere else. No chocolate around the mouth giving it away. Oh, have you found one, Albert? Keep looking, keep looking. You can come up to right to the top. Right all over. songs for at least the last four weeks, haven't we, Albert? Yeah. So, you know, we're well into Christmas already. <laughs> Nativities are approaching very soon. And just in the busyness of everything that comes along in these next weeks, the pressures we might feel, let's keep our eyes on the treasure in heaven with Jesus. I'll leave you there.
Don't be shared the chocolate with me. <laughs>
there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Amen. Bible reading is taken from Matthew 14, 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. <clears throat> again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Amen. Thank you both for those readings. We're going to sing one more song before Julian actually brings us the message this morning. It's called The Father's Song. I'm actually going to ask you not to stand up and actually just reflect and sing this song sitting down. And it starts this, I have heard so many songs, listened to a thousand tongues, but there is one that sounds above them all. And that's what we're going to hear in the sermon later on. <coughs>
Good morning, friends. Thank you for the leading of the opening worship. It's wonderful sometimes to have that opportunity to just be part of the congregation and worship and listen to the Father's voice. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you that you have drawn us here. Your spirit has led us here to be together as the body of Christ. And we come with grateful hearts. We come with open hearts to receive your gifts of grace. Grant, O Lord, as we now ponder, reflect and focus upon the words of Holy Scripture. May your divine spirit open our hearts and minds that we are ready to receive your word to us. That our faith may be strengthened, our love may be deepened, and our walk with you will be ever and more faithful to the glory of your eternal name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, it is an absolute joy and privilege and delight to be here this morning at Haverhill. Uh, when I was looking at my preaching dates, which uh, are sorted out by my administrator as I travel across East Anglia, I realised I would be here this Sunday uh, about a week after stationing and our appointment process. And I am so delighted for you. I am so excited for you as a congregation for the match that we have made with Moses John. I believe it is a match that has been born through much prayer and reflection. I think there is a real match of gifts and graces and God has his hand upon this. Of that I am sure. And so I am really delighted and I'm excited for you, looking forward. I mean, it will really not be long once we get the other side of Christmas. It will soon roll around yeah. to the beginning of a new connectional year. And I hope that you will welcome Moses with all of your love and prayers and faith and work together as the people of God. So that's wonderful. Now, to begin with, I want to remind you of some words from that reading from Isaiah that we read. And it's Isaiah 45, uh, verse 3. Isaiah says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. In the later part of the summer, uh, <clears throat> on a lovely day, Jean and I, Jean is my wife, Jean and I uh, had a day off and we went up to the North Norfolk coast. Don't know whether you're familiar with the North Norfolk coast, but it's a beautiful uh, coastline. And we went to a place called Overstrand, which is about three or four miles down the coast from Cromer. And we climbed down from the cliffs and, and we walked along the beach to Cromer and we had a couple of hours there and then we walked back and we walked to the top of the cliffs at Overstrand where there's a wonderful cafe called the Cliff Top Cafe and we had our lunch looking out over the sea. But on our walk towards Cromer, as we walked along the beach, as we drew nearer to Cromer and the pier, I was aware that there was a group of uh, four men who were beachcombing. They had their metal detectors and they were going backwards and forwards, left and right, across the sand, across the beach. And I noticed how every so often one of them knelt down and began to dig in the sand and then a few moments later stood up and again started moving from left to right and backwards and forwards across the sand. As we drew closer to them, one of them uh, took his headphones off and I got into conversation with him. And what I discovered was that they'd already been there about two or three hours and they had found absolutely nothing at all. And I sensed his real frustration as he was sharing with me. Uh, they were a group of friends, 
and who shared this similar hobby and they went to various beaches in North Norfolk and Suffolk and uh, it had been a disappointing morning. But as we continued to talk, he then began to wax lyrical about the valuable things and the treasures that they found in the past. Valuable coins and artifacts and curious objects that were of value. And he had many stories to tell of buried treasure. Now, I've never done metal detecting. I have no idea what's involved. But I quickly gleaned from that conversation that you clearly need some patience. There's going to be those times when nothing is found. But equally, there are going to be those joyful, surprising, wonderful moments when something valuable is found, perhaps in the most unexpected place and at the most surprising moment. The prophet Isaiah says, I will give you treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places. At this point in time, towards the latter part of the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet is speaking to the covenant people. But he's speaking to a people who are in exile. We know that they are an oppressed people who've been taken to the land of Babylon. They're in a strange place, surrounded by strange customs. And yet, even there... They are called to be the faithful covenant people of God. Now, if you know the Psalms, you'll remember that Psalm, you know, where it says, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat round and we wept when we thought of Zion. Here is a people who are a long way from home. And towards the end of the book of Isaiah, we begin to get these passages of hope and the promise of restoration, and that God has not forgotten his people, and that God will come to his people. And so we hear the message of hope. I will give you treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places. Now, here is a community of people who have every reason to feel that God had abandoned them. Here was a group of people who had every reason to feel that their faith was faltering and they had been abandoned by God. If you like, an experience of being in a dark and difficult place a challenging place of adversity. But listen to what Isaiah says. I will give you treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, even in the most inhospitable place, even in the greatest place of adversity, you will discover the treasures of my grace. You will discover my presence. You will discover my hope becoming real for you because you are mine and I love you. Imagine how that feels to hear those words. And if we know a little bit about the context, we know that that God's will was being discovered through the figure of Cyrus. Cyrus was not a Jew, he was a Gentile, but he was a political leader, he was an upright king, and it was through Cyrus that the restoration and the hope was going to come to the people of Israel. So it really was like treasures of darkness and you know, riches hidden in secret places. In the most unexpected way, in the most surprising fashion, God's will and God's presence and the treasures of God's grace are becoming evident. Now, some of you may know, I hope, or you may have heard, that this year, this Methodist Connection year, our President and Vice President of the Conference 
have challenged us uh, with this presidential theme of hidden treasure. So the presidency of the church are challenging the Methodist people to, in a sense, discover and rediscover the treasures of God's grace, the surprising uh, riches of God's presence, perhaps in the most unexpected, surprising, and curious, and unexpected ways and places. We are being called to be treasure hunters. Now we watched with some amusement, didn't we, earlier on, our young people um, looking around the church for those golden coins. I did so want to get up and have a look around. I might do that later and, uh, and discover those things. You know, actually, when we think about discipleship, or what it means to be followers of Jesus, or people of faith, or Christians, however we want to describe ourselves. I think this is a really interesting kind of theme. I want to place before you a very simple thought, a takeaway thought for today. That being a disciple is like being a treasure hunter. Part of our calling, part of our journey of discipleship is to be people who are alert to, attentive to, opening their eyes to and opening their ears to the sights and sounds of the kingdom of God, the treasures of God's presence and the treasures of God's grace. To discover in the here and now, in the ordinary, in the mundane a fabric of our lives, treasures of God's presence. Now, let's turn to the Gospel reading from Matthew. And you can probably guess why I've chosen this passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. Two of the parables of Jesus, parables of the kingdom, and the common denominator is treasure and valuable things. The parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the merchant looking for fine pearls. The parable of the pearl of great price. Now in Matthew chapter 13 we get a whole host of stories and pithy sayings and tales where Jesus is trying to give people an inkling into the nature of the kingdom of God. So the passages and the stories go something like this. The kingdom of heaven is like, and then Jesus tells the story. And he sort of says, go away and think about it. Parable of the mustard seed, the weeds and the tares. Parable of the good shepherd, the parable of the lost coins. And here, in 44 to 46, parable of the hidden treasure, parable of the pearl of great price. What do we know about these stories? Well, the first story appears to be one of opportunism. A lucky figure who discovers hidden treasure in a field. And with the joy of this surprising discovery, he decides to sell everything he has in order to buy the field and possess the treasure. The point is that what has been found is of infinite value. It is incomparable. And other things become relatively less important. He wants to have the treasure. Second story is slightly different. It revolves around a merchant who spent his life collecting fine pearls and gems and stones. We assume he has some kind of knowledge and expertise. He knows what he's looking for. Spends his lifetime doing it. And then eventually he comes across the pearl of great price. If there was one pearl that you would want in your collection, this is the one. <laughs> he spent his life looking for this one. And now, in similar fashion, he sells the rest of his collection in order to have the pearl of great price. Something of infinite value. 
And Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like this. At the heart of our faith and our discipleship is the treasure, the incomparable, infinite treasure of knowing God and being in relationship with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is about being open to the treasure of the kingdom of God. And in the light of this, other things begin to fall away in importance. And the kingdom of God and the nature of God and the love of God takes hold of us, takes hold of the whole of us and requires a response of heart and mind and soul and body and strength and mind because it's so important and it's treasure of infinite value. So friends, the simple, well deceptively simple, take away thought is that the gospel message and the Old Testament message encourage us, invite us to think that part of what we are called to be is to be treasure hunters. To be people who walk through life with their ears open, their eyes open, their hearts open, their spirits open to the treasure of the presence of God. The sights and sounds of the kingdom of God. How do we understand that? Well, it might be that surprising and joyful expression of kindness that we find ourselves on the receiving end of. It may be a moment where we feel a prayer or prayers have been answered and our heart is warmed. It might be being in worship and hearing something that we feel was meant for us and we feel challenged or comforted or spoken to. It may be a moment out in creation where we see a beautiful sunrise or sunset and we sense something beyond ourselves that is incredibly good and rich and real. It may be that moment where we feel the presence of God and we feel like we are standing on holy ground and God is near. It may be that simple and profound gift of knowing that we are loved and that we have given love and that God is the heart of love itself. Friends, we are called to be treasure hunters. Yes, there'll be the moments where we might feel a bit frustrated and we might feel as though God is a bit remote or a bit distant. But then suddenly, joyfully, unexpectedly, surprisingly, in the most unexpected place or through the most unexpected person, we find ourselves curiously near to the divine and God speaking to us. <coughs> Treasure hunters. But of course, the other thought that goes with this is that not only are we called to be treasure hunters, we're called to be those who enable others to find the treasure too. Jesus was very clear with his disciples, wasn't he? You know, I will make you fishers of people. I will enable you to share my work in drawing other people into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, you will be like salt and light in the world. You will be my witnesses in the world. You will be the signposts who point people to the possibility of God and the presence of Jesus and the fellowship of the Spirit. And what a joyful responsibility that is. It's both gift and responsibility. It's a gift to have that vocation. But it's also a responsibility. As we go back into the world as Christ's disciples, as people who can tell their stories of finding the treasure 
of God's kingdom, we are also called to help others to find that treasure too. I often reflect on the fact that I am only who I am <clears throat> and my ministry is only my ministry because of many, many, many people over the years who have encouraged me and prayed for me and enabled me on my Christian journey. And if I were to take a sheet of paper, I could begin to name those names and I would probably run out of paper. And I guess you, you and I would be similar in that respect. We would be able to name those significant people those significant saints who helped us on our journey and helped us to find God and to find the treasure, the pearl of great price that we dearly hold on to because it's so central and real and precious and wonderful and incomparable. Isaiah says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places. Friends, I want to commend to you that ministry of treasure hunting. And I want to commend to you the ministry of enabling others to find that treasure too. And I hope and pray that that will be at the forefront of your minds and your hearts in this year, in a year that is a year of transition for you as a congregation, as you move towards that beginning of next year, and as you welcome new ministry, and as you begin a new chapter and a new journey in the phase of the life of this church. Part of me thinks and believes and prays that actually this year of transition in between is really, really important for all sorts of reasons in order for you to be where you will be in September 2024. I shall be thinking of you and praying for you and I shall look forward to hearing about stories of treasure. Treasure found treasure shared, treasure celebrated. Amen. I think we're going to sing a song that I chose. Is that right? The Lord's my shepherd. It's a wonderful, wonderful song. Thank you for indulging my choice. Shall we all rise and sing? The Lord's my shepherd.
followers of God and as Christians to pray for others. And I'm going to ask Alan to come forward this morning and lead us in the intercessions of prayer and the Lord's prayer as we meet today. Thank you. Father, we've been reminded this morning of all the hidden riches in your world. Forgive us for sometimes ignoring your glory and grandeur in the world you created. We can walk through life with our senses turned off. Give us, we pray, the gift of caring contemplation so that we may see your glory reflected in all things. The early morning sun rising, the serenity of a winter sky at dusk, the image of Christ in the face of a friend. And sometimes, let us see things that are so beautiful they almost make us afraid. They are hidden treasures, but are always there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. However, our world, Lord, is not as you created it, with hatred, injustice and greed within and between the nations. We pray for a time when all peoples will live in mutual respect and cooperation. We pray for all those suffering in Ukraine and Gaza, that negotiation will be seen as the only solution that and that leaders may stand up to the challenges of brokering peace deals with their former enemies. God of unquenchable hope, <coughs> confirm our belief that this is not how things should be. Affirm our belief that things can and will be different. Strengthen our belief in Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Nearer to home, we pray for our National Health Service, that you will give your wisdom and perseverance to those whose job it is to address the financial problems in these stringent times. We pray for the people in Christian agencies supported in this church, such as Adopt a Child, Youth for Christ, Christian Aid, and Open Doors. Holy Spirit, May they be filled afresh by you in this coming week. Lord, in your mercy, <coughs> hear our prayers. We pray for a blessing on the outreach of this church in Haverhill, including Reach, Open Mind, Next Door, Town Pastors, Illuminate, and others. We have a task to do in this world as your good news people, to bind up the brokenhearted, the grieving, the abandoned, the emotionally damaged. <coughs> Help us, Lord, to offer them our love and our time filled with your compassion. In particular, we remember those presenting the Walking Nativity event next Saturday. May they open the eyes of those in this town who are blind to your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now share some moments of silence together as each of us brings before you those we know who are in need of your healing at this time. presence in their lives as we name them in our hearts and commit them to your loving care. Abba Father, open our eyes to see what you are doing around us. Forgive us when we ask you to bless what we are doing. Rather, help us to do what you are blessing. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen.
Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 